Good morning all. Welcome to the comprehensive webinar on artificial intelligence in energy management organized by Energy Management Center. Considering the present situation of COVID-19 pandemic and related social distancing in society, ENC is planning to conduct a series of webinars in this year. As part of this, we have prepared a webinar calendar titled Energy Efficiency in All Walks of Life from Lamps to Boilers. This was released by Honorable Minister for Electricity, Sri M. M. Mani. We are also planning to conduct certificate courses related to various energy related topics. The details will be available in Energy Management Center's website. Now, let me invite Mr. Dinesh Kumar A.N., Head of ESS Division ESP, for the welcome speech. Good morning, all. Welcome to the webinar on Artificial Intelligence in Energy Management organized by Energy Management Center Kerala, in short, ENC. Myself, I am Dinesh Kumar A.N., Head of the ESS Division of ENC. ENC, as you know, is a state designated agency of Bureau of Energy Efficiency Ministry of our Government of India who coordinate, enforce, and implement Energy Conservation Act 2001 in the field. The center is devoted to the improvement of energy efficiency in all sectors of economy in the state through promotion of energy conservation and encouraging development of technologies related to energy through demonstration programs, research, training, and awareness creation. The center also acts as advisory body to the government of Kerala in the field of energy and have well knit networking with experts, technocrats, and government as well as non-government organizations for implementing energy efficiency projects and provide highly competitive and efficient services to the end users. Today, we are conducting a comprehensive webinar on artificial intelligence in energy management. Artificial intelligence or AI as mentioned shortly is a thing which is no longer a buzzword for industrial application. Being the biggest technological trend, it is so omnipresent in every sector and disrupting the method of executing tasks in the way we used to be doing it traditionally. Well, new advances in computer vision, machine learning and deep learning, artificial intelligence has also added a new dimension to utility and application services that also leverages advanced neural networks. The wonder of artificial intelligence capability are ever expanding. A offers a better scope to be utilized in energy management and meeting demand supply by various industries. As this global utility sector is seeing a paradigm shift towards energy efficient production and preservation methods to meet the high demand of power supply by consumers. The industry works on more of decentralization and decarbonization. In addition, it is now every sector's core responsibility to manage the imbalance in demand and supply with while preserving. When used with core energy systems of any organization, artificial intelligence capabilities in combination with machine learning and deep learning algorithms can easily drive insights into operation of energy operation. In another way, it then parses the data and suggests an actionable approach to energy management while helping you save costs on unnecessary energy use. It is a real-time approach to reduce energy wastage and build new energy saving opportunities by optimizing every industry's energy consumption using untapped data. Now, coming to the speaker of the day, we have Mr. Matthew J. Joseph, Vice President of APAR Technologies Private Limited, who is known for his thought leadership in area of artificial intelligence. He is the head of artificial intelligence lab of CIMB Bank. He has over 29 years of experience in software development. 
technology consulting and project management also. Mr. Matthew has completed his post graduation in data science and machine learning from University of Chicago. Let me welcome Sri Matthew Jacob. Thank you. Can you give the option to share the screen also? Um, no, can you please check? I hope uh, I'm audible and uh, you can see the screen. Yes, yes. Okay, so we will start the session. So, this is on the artificial intelligence uh, in energy management. Um, so, thanks to EMC. Um, center for the invitation and thanks for the introduction. So when we talk about the artificial intelligence, so we, it, it's, it all comes in the media. Right? So we are all familiar with the, the concept of artificial intelligence and how it's making news. And uh, we are hearing from the media, from the TV channels, from the international media. So there are many such news makers in the artificial intelligence. So the driverless car, the Tesla. No? So we are all familiar with that. So we hear, we hear about Tesla, how it's making the news and uh, how it is uh, completely changing the automobile industry or the how the transportation is uh, totally redefined using the driverless car. Then the, recently the, we, heard the, we heard about the a artificial intelligence robot, the Sophia. So, and then the if we talk about uh, the other day-to-day um, artificial intelligence applications, we are all familiar with our phone, the, the Alexa, the CD in the iPhone. Then we hear about the news about the robotic surgery, which is making news. Um, so in total, in, 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 all these are applications of artificial intelligence. So these are the areas, or these are, we can say, these are the consumer artificial intelligence. So this is kind of consumer products. The artificial intelligence is built in certain products which we can buy or which we can use it for our daily usage. So for example, a driverless car, if you buy a driverless car from Tesla, it comes with a built-in artificial intelligence, and then you can use it for the, the purpose which is it, for which it is intended. So you can drive the car on the artificial, uh, you, without the you know, um, driving it, and then uh, for the Alexa or for Siri, which you have on your phone, uh, if you have an iPhone, you have the Siri, so you can ask the question. You have, you can have a personalized conversation. You can ask the questions, and the Siri will respond to you. Then there is the robotic surgery, which will take care of uh, for the uh, in a hospital. If you are in a hospital, the doctors for particular some kind of uh, um, um, surgeries, uh, the robotic surgeries. Um, this is uh, widely used. So these are all artificial intelligence. Uh, gadgets or uh, consumer products which is has built-in artificial intelligence, right? And then uh, if you read the uh, media, if you follow the media, many people talk about artificial intelligence as a threat to humanity. It is going to take away the jobs. Is it going to control the humans? So this kind of discussions happen, no? right? So this, this is for any new technology when it comes, we hear this kind of discussions, right? So 30 years back when the computers came, now, there were a lot of discussions and uh, strike and a uh, lot of uh, debate happening about whether the computers will take over the humans or whether it will take over the jobs. All these fears will still be there. But still, this is a technology which is going to stay, which is going to um, change the humanity, which is going to change the way we work. The change is going to change the, the way which uh, humans are going to live. Okay, so these are all consumer artificial intelligence products. But when we talk about, uh, um, then there is another aspect, right? So that's called the enterprise artificial intelligence. So what is that? 
so 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 we have um, we talked about the consumer artificial intelligence where the artificial intelligence is built in a product in a robot or in a car or in a, any machinery a smart machine or smart pump or anything that is a consumer artificial intelligence but in an enterprise you can apply artificial intelligence this technology you can use it and then you can drive your business strategy you can drive your business using this technology right so so you can have uh, data driven enterprises you can have the artificial intelligence driven enterprises companies industries so we are going to talk about that so when we talk about energy management it's a segment of uh, energy um, generation distribution and consumption it's it's a segment of the industry right so we are going to talk about how we can apply this artificial intelligence in this particular segment of the industry and then when we talk about uh, uh, artificial intelligence in the industry the first question people will say is you know, whenever i speak to the uh, the, the industries the, the first thing they say is oh my my company is a small company you know you can't use artificial intelligence or my company is in this particular segment maybe in retail or maybe in uh, uh, consumer goods maybe in insurance or maybe in banking or maybe in manufacturing or uh, some kind of uh, um, uh, the, the, a, a, a mining or oil and gas it can be any industry so that the good news is that we can use artificial intelligence in every industry if you have the digital data so it, it's called a data science so that's why we call it as data science so if you have data and if you have big data if you have high volumes of data you can use that data to derive at decisions you can predict your future you can predict your future strategy your uh, you can analyze your market you can analyze the sentiment of your customers and you can uh, derive and define your business strategy using this data using the artificial intelligence technology right so every any company even if it's a small retailer even if it's a small company if you have uh, uh, the data you can still use it right so so that's a, that's the message which we need to understand so if you look at the the the, the how the uh, industry is growing in the last uh, uh, couple of decades right all most of the most of the industries are computerized now earlier uh, say 30 years back we were all doing the industries we were doing the business manually whether it's uh, uh, energy uh, electricity or whether it is manufacturing or uh, uh, retail or uh, any of the industry we were all doing manu manually maybe 30 years back but during the last three decades the computerization came in and then most of our businesses most of our processes most of our uh, uh, manufacturing or uh, most of the ac activities or tasks which we execute in a particular industry is computer driven and then that data is stored in some systems in some computer so the now the next step for the every industry is to take that data collect that digital data into a big data platform and then apply machine learning apply deep learning apply nlp apply computer vision technologies different uh, artificial intelligence uh, technologies and use it for future decision management for predicting the future for forecasting your market for predicting for designing you and defining your strategy and then if you don't have data right now you you, you may not be 100 percent digital right now right so maybe a, a, a bank could be 100 percent digital maybe an online um, retailer could be 100 percent digital but most of the other conventional traditional business is not 100 percent digital you take a take a oil and gas refinery right most of the things are not digital you you, you don't need a computer to run a refinery you don't need a um, computer to run a manufacturing uh, plastic uh, molding plant right so most of the things are not digital so what we need to do is so before we apply the data science before we apply the artificial intelligence technology we need to go digital so maybe using the iot the, using the sensor data on your critical equipment you can collect the data and then bring it to, into a big data platform it can be on a data center or it can be on a cloud and then apply the artificial intelligence and de design solutions 
artificial intelligence solutions in your industry segment so that's how we that's the road map for going uh, into digital and going artificial intelligence way okay so if you take a step back to look at the history of artificial intelligence uh, um, history of humanity you take a step back we know that a few centuries back you know, there was agricultural revolution right so many centuries back we had uh, agricultural revolution so we, we we study that in our uh, history right so we study that in our um, history how the agricultural revolution people were doing the farming manually uh, people were uh, doing all the work manually and then came a time of industrial revolution so the industrial revolution was driven by artificial power so the invention of steam power fossil fuel electricity uh, oil uh, petroleum all these with, with all this uh, power and then with the invention of uh, machineries and automobiles the in, the industrial revolution started so whatever work humans were doing earlier manually whether it's in farming or in any 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 sphere of life whatever task which we were doing earlier now the machine started helping the humans so people started uh, uh, the work uh, so there were work uh, people were started people started uh, uh, using the machine mr rajiv sir your screen sharing has stopped i think can you again can you share your screen sir okay okay Can you hear? See now. Are you able to see now? So let us just try it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now. Okay. Okay. So, so the so during the industrial revolution, people started using machineries to. reduce their effort and then the work is done by machines so what are we are seeing now in the uh, as a result so in the 20, 20th century or 21st earlier 21st century all the uh, development of humanity is because of it's a result of industrial revolution so whether it's the people if you have to travel from say trivandrum from srigarhim to palayam right so earlier if it was uh, 300 years back or 400 years back you had to you had to walk 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers but now you have an automobile you, you can take a bike or you can take a car and then you can drive from srigarhim to palayam or to, uh, to uh, and reduce your effort so you don't have to walk you don't have to walk for two hours instead of that you can reach in 15 minutes or 20 minutes you can cover that and then any any activity which you do right so if you have to bring some um some some cargo say 100 kg kilograms of cargo from srigarhim to palayam um if it was 300 years back you have to carry you have to you, you need uh, say four people to carry 25 kg each from on your shoulder and then you take it there but now with uh, machineries with uh, the result of the industrial revolution you can have a lorry or you can have a, any automobile and take the load in that and with the help of uh, one person you can drive and bring the cargo to palayam right so the industrial revolution is reducing the human effort and it's increasing the the efficiency it is increasing the productivity and it it's improving the quality of our life right so any you, you take any um, um, aspect of our life whether it's in the kitchen or whether it's in our manufacturing shop floor whether it's in the society all the task which we were doing earlier manually now you have machine some kind of machines available which is helping you to increase your productivity and do the things easily to do the, come to do the task easily and quicker and faster and efficiently right so that's the result of industrial revolution now the next step is we are going to get into an another industrial revolution which we call industry 4.0 where you will have So earlier you had a car which is taking your uh, a, 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 an automobile or a car or a lorry which was taking cargo from Srigarhim to Palayam. Now you add artificial intelligence to that automobile. You add artificial intelligence to that car, then it becomes driverless car, right? And when if you come into the energy field, energy sector, 
you have uh, pumps which is pumping the water right to your the, the generator you know there are huge pumps which are pumping water into the generators right that's that's the that's artificial power instead of manually putting pulling the water from a reservoir to a, a generator you have a huge electric pump with uh, hundreds of force powers multiple pumps which are which is pumping the water into a generator now you add the artificial intelligence to that pump it becomes a smart pump right so in this new industrial revolution we are going to see that so you take any sphere of industry whether it's a shop floor or any a, a, a reactor in a refinery or a machine um, a cnc machine or a, a, or a, 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 a machine in a shop floor a painting um, machine in a in a pump in a car uh, assembly unit or uh, any of the machinery we can add artificial intelligence to those machines and make it smart right you have an, an um, um, the generator is there in in our, in our energy generation uh, units so you can add the artificial intelligence to that and it becomes smart generators you have transformers you have uh, pumps and you have different electrical equipment which is running on uh, uh, electricity we can add artificial intelligence to that and it becomes smart it becomes uh, you can help in optim optimizing the energy it can help in uh, um, uh, consuming the energy based on the need instead of just running the uh, machine or running the uh, pump 24 bar 7 right so so that's going to change the way humans are going to live okay so the artificial intelligence is going to trigger a new industrial revolution it's going to trigger the way we are going to live Okay, so now we will talk about energy efficiency in the artificial intelligence, energy efficiency and artificial intelligence. So when we talk about uh, energy efficiency, what's energy efficiency, right? So those who are in the energy sector, you know that 74%. It's a it's a it's a global figure, so, so you can take it as an approximate number about around 70% of all generated electricity powers factories and buildings with. 60% of that is wasted. So 60% of the energy is wasted either at the generation or transmission or at the consumption points, right? So whether so it can it can be transmission loss, it can be people uh, where the consumers you know, who are using different electrical machineries um, wasting the energy. It can be different uh, areas where the energy wastage is happening, and that is going to translate into billions of dollars, whether it's in dollars or in rupees. It's going to be a huge loss. To stop this from happening, we need to understand where the wastage is happening, how, why this wastage is happening. So that's where we can bring in artificial intelligence. So if we have that, if we can collect the data of all this energy, so using IoT uh, machinery, so using the sensors uh, on different equipment, we can collect all this data. We can using the artificial intelligence analyze that and see where is the energy leakage happening, where is the energy wastage happening, and then we can optimize. So whether it's in the um, energy distribution, it can be in the residential buildings, it can be in commercial buildings, it can be um, energy in the energy wastage in the industry, it can be energy wastage in municipalities, in hospitals, shopping malls, wherever it is, we can use energy artificial intelligence to monitor, collect information, and then apply the artificial intelligence machine learning models, and then we can evaluate, predict the uh, energy usage, consumption in different buildings and factories. Right, so that's how we are going to use artificial intelligence in the energy sector. Okay, and then um, so so there is a concept of uh, you know the the variable load. So you know in in India we may not, we may not be familiar with that, but we can still um, you know many countries they they have the you know, variable load. So you pay based on your load consumption. You know, so you don't need to be a fixed load. So using the uh, different uh, controls uh, um, uh, so, so this artificial intelligence solutions will control the energy usage and it reduces during the peak hours and then signals problems and detect equipment failure before they occur so there is an electric equipment there it will detect before that and then without um, allowing the machine to uh, fail or break down you can predict in advance okay and then using data to drive decision making you can drive, take, take the data to drive your decision making you can actually monitor a processor you can actively use the predictive analysis to bring the attention to the problem issues before they occur so before a problem occurs 
whether it's a breakdown or whether it's a replacement needed or any uh, or a, there is a energy theft or any kind of issues in terms of energy efficiency you can predict it you can in advance you can get notified and take a proactive action instead of waiting for that uh, breakdown to happen and then you go and respond to that okay and again a solutions are capable of accepting text data um, big data whether it's structured data unstructured data semi structured data images videos uh, natural language and you can use all these uh, different forms of data and then run the machine learning models and run the neural networks and predict your future and take corrective actions okay so this is a snapshot of the artificial intelligence so we talk about multi different technologies so what are they right so artificial intelligence you have deep learning you have uh, machine learning no machine learning have deep learning and predictive analytics so we will talk about the different use cases um, after this so this will give you an overview of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and then the different technologies underlying technologies within that then you have natural language processing so for example the energy management uh, now if you have a, if you have if you are running a business you have a factory and you have a social media right and then the people are going to write uh, feedback about your products about your services on different websites on your social media facebook twitter uh, or on your website reviews so you're going to so that's going to generate in, you know, millions of uh, reviews and feedback and complaints everything so what are you going to do with that so using the nat natural language processing the nlp you can apply sentiment you, you can find out the sentiment customer sentiment what are they talking about what are the complaints what are the actionable insights so what action you need to take you can do um, build the nlp solutions and come up with this kind of insight then there is speech to text so for personal assistant and then text to speech you now the siri siri is there so uh, uh, and then um, and different uh, personal assistants and then the chatbots all these are applying using this kind of technologies then planning scheduling optimization robotics that's another field of uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence artificial built uh, ai enabled robots so you can have that kind of robots in the in a huge power station where humans cannot go there or humans it's very risky or dangerous you can deploy a robot which will do the maintenance activities in a, in a huge power plant and then there is uh, vision you know, the computer vision image recognition video recognition video analytics all of these are part of the artificial intelligence so based on your business requirement based on based on what kind of data you have and what are the business uh, objective you are you what are the business problem you are going to solve based on that you can take any of these piece of uh, technology and build a solution and use it okay then artificial intelligence in power generation so when we talk about uh, energy management right from power generation uh, distribution and consumption right so we will we'll go through the entire life cycle so this is uh, in a in a power generation so this is one of the one of the use cases so so for example in a, in a huge power plant in a in a generator whether it's a hydroelectric or thermal power plant or uh, nuclear nuclear power, power plant it can be anything so there are generators huge gener generators so those who are in the energy sector will know that you know that we have the idki power plant is there then there are many uh, hydro power plants are there so we can have so what what happens when a particular uh, say you have five five uh, you know generators and turbines are there and then uh, then how what happens when suddenly one uh, generator goes down it's a problem right so you will have a shortage power shortage and the power, power, power failure down the line downstream all the consumers so you can it can have a lot critical very big uh, impact on, on on the lives of people so instead of that we can have failure probability modeling so take uh, so so you have a sensor at the critical uh, uh, component and then collect the data streams uh, so you take out take the different uh, data from the server it can be rpm the the speed the temperature the the oil oil temperature or the lubrication the wear and tear uh, the vibration um, or the water head it can be all different critical parameters critical data you take it and stream it into a big data platform and then you do, do the modeling of failure probability modeling 
and then you can say that this particular uh, generator is likely to fail or this particular component in a generator is likely to fail so you for, before failing you can go and replace it you can fix it you can fix the problem right so that, that's the advantage of uh, failure probability modeling okay so this is a predictive maintenance uh, of turbines so, so we have this uh, vortex uh, hydroelectric uh, project in Trivandrum, right so this is one of the solutions which we can do there so predictive algorithm for maintenance so instead of uh, looking at uh, whether it's a, the, it's a pump or it's a generator, um, the critical equipment, critical machinery is in a, in a power plant, you can build a predictive maintenance solution. So instead of waiting for the uh, your scheduled maintenance or instead of waiting for a major breakdown, you can have the this solution and each critical component you can say that and what is the uptime before failure. How much time? What is likely to this particular component, whether it's a shaft or a crankshaft or whether it's a, um, a different uh, component of a of a, a generator? You can say that you collect the data using the sensors uh, through this uh, from these machineries and bring it into a big data platform and then build a predictive algorithm which will say this particular component is likely to fail after so many days or after so many hours. For this particular component in a, in a generator need to be replaced after so many days so you you will get lifespan analysis you will get uh, decision trees regression methods identify root cause and then historical uh, no so so you will have you you need to take all the data no, so the historical maintenance data the so particular one one shaft is there crank shaft is there one particular piston is there uh, so how, how many on this this is made of this this material uh, what is the metallurgy of that uh, uh, component and then historical maintenance data so you need to take all this data and how many how many months this was running this particular uh, component how and under this condition how, how much how long this this failed this to, it took to fail so all this historical maintenance data uh, then the lifespan analysis model pearson correlation identify operating variables associated with lifespan and and take the real time uh, data, streaming data from each component of the this machinery using sensors and then you build predictive maintenance solutions and then you will get notification you will get on your dashboard for the maintenance manager he will get the information when this particular uh, component is likely to fail so before waiting for the before that actual breakdown happens you can go and replace that you can go and uh, rectify it okay so again um, this uh, machinery how it is going i mean how this predictive maintenance solution will help it will help um, it, it will help uh, i mean it will take the maintenance uh, uh, by uh, data real time sensor data the maintenance data historical data of the equipment so this kind of say if it is a, a pump so historical data from the manufacturer or from the uh, users of similar kind of uh, pump hundreds of pumps what is the historical data for each of the component in terms of failure and its lifespan so you take that kind of uh, historical data for uh, so many years and then the maintenance data and then the real uh, real time sensor data from the critical components you take all that data and build a predictive maintenance model predictive maintenance solution predictive analytics and then it will help to reduce unplanned shutdown predictive when maintenance is required when the uh, ensure effective and efficient spending on pro proactive maintenance optimize operating conditions to max maximize equipment lifetime so you can say that let's say for example you now if the if the water head is this much now you 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 may you may have to go for a, a different particular pump or if the, or, a, or a generator so you you may you can find you the different operating conditions so that the rpm or the vibration so if there is too much of vibration you can bring it down so you can look at uh, once you have this model in place you know which are the critical features which are which is going which is likely to impact the failure so you can optimize that you can find tune that so with that you can proactively futuristically you can um, ex uh, extend the life lifespan of of a particular machine or or, or a particular component of a machine okay so this is one uh, one typical uh, uh, use case which we which we can use in the any hydro any um, um, energy plant any it can be hydroelectric plant or um, it can be nuclear plant or uh, thermal plant, anything.
So use it for every critical machinery. Okay, then this is another another use case, the smart grid uh, security and theft uh, det detection. So we know that uh, the electricity theft, it, it's a huge uh, problem in every country, right? So there are thieves which uh, they come with innovative uh, um, solution, innovative ideas to uh, steal the power. So electric energy theft is regarded as one of the expensive theft. Okay, so the energy companies, we need to make efforts to prevent it and take uh, so smart grid uh, application smart grid uh, security and theft detection solution is going to help you in that so so the predict uh, energy theft and to result of money loss monitor the energy flows to react immediately to stop suspicious matters so you can build the predictive solutions and come up with uh, who is the behavior the users and then any any um, behavior changes there or any uh, constantly track the user's behavior to detect the hackers. So before someone is going to uh, behave uh, uh, you know, unnaturally or behave in a suspicious way, we can predict it. We can say that, okay, there is a likelihood of our theft. So the constant monitoring of the solution, uh, monitoring of the energy flows, transmission and con consumption will help in energy uh, theft detection. Then outage detection and prediction. So how the power outage happens, right? So suddenly the you, you will have power outage. It can have there are uh, different reasons for that. So it can be blackout, complete blackout, or it can be uh, partial blackout, partial outage. So despite the effort made by the companies belonging to the energy industry, the power outage still takes place, leaving. a considerable number of people without power so, so um, you know that in, in kerala or in every state in in india we face this and uh, a power outage happens and then suddenly unexpected power uh, failure so all this we can detect in advance and we can predict we can predict and then we can take preventive measures to uh, which uh, and uh, find out what are the reasons um, for this uh, failure However, a blackout preventive measure is a result of the automatic protection and system operation. So you can automatically protect particular system and then you can predict um, that these are the reasons for the prediction um, and then you, you can take proactive action to avoid the failure, breakage, outage or whenever there is an outage happens, you can quickly, you can be prepared so that you resolve it quickly. Okay, and then outage, you know that uh, outage is not 100% uh, in our control. So if I am an, an electrical engineer sitting in a power plant um, or in a power generation unit or in a distribution civil uh, supply station cannot control or stop all the power outage reasons. So there are weather related uh, conditions. So there are many uh, external factors, right, which are influencing the uh, power outage. So we can consider this we can collect those data weather data conditions on the power grid um, and then we can use that and develop uh, predictive solutions to predict the power outage so predicting the influence of weather conditions on the power grid predicting the impact of the near time asset values on the power grid detecting possible outages by smart meter events detecting outage in the specified areas so each area the situation is different so there are there may be many areas, uh, so place to place, the reason for the power outage will change. So the climate will change, the consumption will change, um, the user profile will change, all this will change and those things we can predict. Real-time filtering of outage inputs and recognition of the outage type, confirmation of the outage and communicating on this matter. So once we get these reasons, once we can predict this, we can communicate to the right person and to avoid the outage or take the precautionary measures or take the backup plan if the outage cannot be avoided and the dynamic energy management so this is one critical case uh, of artificial intelligence usage where we can 
build solutions to manage the energy dynamically manage the load okay so in terms of demand what is the energy demand distributed energy sources temporary load or the demand reduction all this we can predict so dynamic energy management system is for managing the load so whether it's a industry or whether it's a shopping mall whether it's a big uh, uh, um, apartment complex or whether it's a commercial building whatever it is we can use this dynamic energy management solution to manage the load we can have conventional energy management solution concerning demand what is the energy demand distributed energy sources and demand side management along with challenges like saving temporary load and demand reduction on energy management systems have developed and then we can have dynamic management system in the smart grid so optimization of energy flows between the provider and consumer so right from the uh, energy generation plant um, to the consumer we can optimize the energy flow so you know use the energy the efficiency of the energy management system is it depends on the load forecasting uh, and so so we will know that each Uh, consumer whether it's uh, hospital whether it's uh, industry complex or whether it's a uh, shopping complex or uh, any building or it's a uh, street light or any kind of consumers what is the energy requirement how much energy is needed at what point of time so it is not going to be 24 hours 7 constant so the people are going to use energy so in the night it is they are going to use it for lighting and in the day they are going to use it if it's a manufacturing plant they are going to use it to run the uh, machineries um, so so the usage will change from user to user and from time to time and from season to season so say for example in the winter season or in the rainy season you don't need a, you, know, you don't you, you 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 will not run the air conditioners but in the summer season you will run all the air conditioners you will run all the fans and the many other such equipment so season to season also the energy usage will change so using this dynamic energy management solution we can predict the energy uh, the load forecasting we can predict it and then applying big data analytics to this data to make performance estimation and provide smart recommendation for energy management so we can recommend what is the um, energy power how much power to be generated at what time and how many generators should be running at this particular time given that this is the energy requirement at this particular time so if once we have a forecasting once we have the prediction on the energy usage we can take that data back and then we can pass it to the energy generation unit and we can plan the energy production and then the improving the operational efficiency so this is very um, you know this is one area where we all um, you know um, waste energy so the operational efficiency so you have a, a big manufacturing plant and then there may be many um, um, machines which are running unnecessarily there may be many um, uh, electric, uh, no, lightings or fans or ac or many many of those electrically uh, electric powered uh, equipment which are running unnecessarily which we can optimize we can improve the operational efficiency which is going so these are all going to add it into the operational cost so we can have real time monitoring which provide data concerning time activity rate and state of operation and then this data is processed in combination with the external factors to define the average efficiency and then data science is used for modeling of various situations and prediction of possible efficiency rates and under various circumstances okay and then we can take all this real time data concerning the asset health so whether there is a pump which is a faulty or if, or, a, or a machine which uh, or an uh, engine which has uh, lesser efficiency uh, so once we have that monitoring of the asset health we can either repair it or replace it so if there is a particular machine which is consuming more energy than expected or than designed we can monitor that uh, machine and then we can repair it, rectify it or we can replace it so that's how we we improve the operational efficiency so real time data concerning the asset health supply and demand analysis monitor the conditions cost and performance so the performance of the machine and the different uh, equipments we can have a uh, you know a monitoring system predictive system which will help in improving the operational efficiency so this is another way of using the artificial intelligence in the in a in a uh, establishment or in a organization or in a factory then artificial intelligence in the commercial sector
so when we talk about uh, commercial sectors right so the uh, no, the, the if you are in the energy department so one of the main consumer for uh, energy is electricity is the commercial sector so it can be hospitals shopping malls office buildings can be educational centers hotels um, uh, industries manufacturing units a uh, different type of uh, commercial sectors right so they all use they are all they all you know, consume energy in a big way so artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize the way energy in commercial sector buildings are managed so whether you are dealing with uh, all these uh, Uh, hospital or uh, education institutions or hotels or anything we can reduce the energy cost by managing it properly and monitoring the uh, consumption and predicting and forecasting the usage you can optimize that okay and then we can have smart commercial buildings that will learn and optimize the energy usage by themselves so you have say n number of hundreds of uh, uh, so if you have a commercial uh, shopping mall Right. So you have hundreds of equipment there. Um, escalators are there, fans, AC units, uh, centralized AC. Then uh, each uh, there are there will be many uh, you know, sewage plants, pumps will be there, water water sub circulation, um, and then lighting. All these uh, equipment we can monitor, and whenever uh, and on a need basis, on a usage uh, basis, you can power on that, and you don't need to waste the You know, so for example, an escalator need not run all the time, right? Only if there is someone who is going to step into an escalator, somebody need to go from one floor to another floor, and if he is stepping on the escalator, then only you need to switch on that. So you can have a sensor-based uh, IoT-enabled uh, escalator, and then the collect that data, and then you will know that when how much uh, energy this escalator is uh, using it, and then what time it should be running, and what time it should not be running, right? and same way with the electric uh, the ac so you have a 10 story shopping mall right oh, and there are uh, say 1000 uh, uh, rooms in the you know uh, establishments or shops inside that shopping mall you don't need to run the um, air condition unit and supply uh, cool air all the time to all these places only when there is occupied people are there you detect the person there and then you run the at that particular that area even with the lighting you don't need the lighting to be running you no know, on switch on all the time in a shopping mall right you can have sensors and collect that data and then you can have smart uh, equipment smart uh, uh, sensors and uh, uh, which will be connected to this uh, electric um, equipment and you can you run it only when it, there is a need right so a solution can become uh, your automated facility energy management system so you manage the energy usage consumption based on the need and optimize or reduce wherever it is wasted so artificial intelligence collecting this data you can then with that data you can forecast and predict that okay this particular time or in a month or this particular date or this particular time this is the energy uh, needed and if you have a dynamic uh, loading pattern you know, so if you have a dynamic loading concept of building Uh, which may not be uh, no, applicable right now for us but uh, once it comes in if you have that dynamic uh, loading so you can always optimize when the uh, charges are more you can reduce your consumption and if the uh, rate uh, plan is high uh, less you can consume more or you can optimize your operations at what time it should be running and then the extra electricity you can buy a sen- sen- sell outside so once you know if there are many countries you have that option of selling out your uh, unconsumed uh, electricity so that's how you uh, use the in a, in a commercial sector you can use the um, energy optimization um, using artificial intelligence then these are the you know, um, so certain artificial intelligence uh, solutions monitor and control and enter buildings energy activities in order to achieve energy conservation So as I said, if it is a huge shopping mall or a huge commercial building, there are many kind of equipments, right? The heating, the ventilation. You know, heating may not be applicable for our Indian situation, but uh, in Western countries, uh, you need the heating in the winter and then AC, air conditioner, you know, or the um, in the other other season, then the gas and water supply system, temperature sensors, humidity, vibration, air leak problem detection. So all these we need to monitor. and these are some of the success stories from the um, commercial sector using artificial intelligence the google company use google 
you know, the different officers, they consume, in, this is a 2015 data, right? So they say that, you know, this is the, you know, so, so much of uh, millions of megawatts uh, electricity they consume for their data center, for their cloud center, for their offices altogether. They used, uh, they were using in 2015 this much of electricity, which can, which is equivalent to uh, around half million uh, homes, uh, say 366,000 homes. That much energy they were using and using a uh, Google DeepMind uh, AI enabled uh, solution, artificial intelligence solution, they saved 40% of the energy. So there are two things. One is you save the energy, you save the cost, so you, you save the money, right? So that's a success story. So how much artificial intelligence can help you in saving the energy? And a hospital in Delhi. So this is also another success story. These are all, you know, this all came in the news and these are all success stories, uh, real stories which happened who applied uh, artificial intelligence to using artificial intelligence, a hospital in Delhi. Within in six months, their energy usage was reduced by 35%. San Permanent Hospital in New Delhi. Then British University, they they saved the energy by 30%. So when you say 30%, the energy usage is reduced by 30% and then they are saving millions, millions of dollars saving. Then Crown, Crown Plaza in the US, they also saved by 47%. Okay, so that's a saving. So it's about uh, half million uh, savings uh, per year for uh, for one particular building. Okay, so one we are talking about one particular commercial building, so Crown Plaza. So if you apply this kind of, use this kind of artificial intelligence solutions in multiple uh, commercial buildings and establishments and uh, institutions across, um, it, it's going to save a lot. Then we will talk about artificial intelligence for building energy management systems. So as you can see in this uh, picture, so, the slide. Can you? Did I miss that? Oh. Can you see the slides? Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So as you can see in this picture, um, uh, if you go to the techno park or in, in IT park, if you come to Bangalore and uh, you go to any uh, techno park in that area, all these slides. Uh, I think the slide has text in 23. Pardon? The slide is stuck, I think. You're not able to see the slides? No, no, no. This is second the um, commercial sector slide. slide okay, okay. Okay. Okay, let me stop and start away. Okay. Okay, I'm not able to stop the sharing. Okay, so one minute. One minute. Yeah. So Rajiv, the stop sharing is not working. Maybe if you can. So can you please refresh the page, sir? Okay, one second. Can I Okay, now I shared. So let me know once uh, you are able to see, then we can proceed. Uh, yes, sir. Visible artificial intelligence for building energy management system. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the I, yeah I'm on the 
building manage energy management system slide yes. so you can see right okay okay so so as you can see in this uh, picture um, this is a typical scene what you see in any it park no? so big, big it complexes are there big office buildings are there all the lightings are on uh, the centralized ac will be on all the machines all the pumps everything will be running 24 bar 7 in an office right so that's a huge energy wastage so how are we going to um, reduce that energy wastage right so in, in so in, in any building energy management system so commercial buildings account for a significant share of uh, global energy consumption and compared to you know the residential building so residential buildings will be small and then the number of uh, equipments for the energy machineries which is running on energy will be less compared to commercial buildings so commercial buildings the energy is wasted so when the even when the, uh, the building is not occupied maybe a, a, some portion of the building is not occupied but still we provide all the services the centralized ac will be provided the escalators will be provided say say all this happens in a commercial building right so the commercial buildings have the potential to participate in energy markets as sources of flexible demand so we need to have the uh, we can have this artificial intelligence solutions to define the flexible demand and uh, and uh, reduce the load when, the, uh, when when it's required and increasing it when supplies of electricity are plentiful. So when there is supply more, you can plan some of the activities say for the um, uh, some of the activities in a in a in a commercial building which are heavy, running on heavy load. We can plan it based on the energy availability. Okay. So tapping into the plentiful data exists to optimize. So we can optimize the commercial energy uh, building energy usage. And from time to time, we can plan it and we can forecast and then take that data and give it back to the energy generation to for the energy production. So on the building management system, so building existing energy management system, so we need to collect all this. So what are the data sources? So we need to collect all the data sources, whether it's the weather data or the different machinery which is running, whether it's AC or escalators or electric lighting. All this data collected and then analyze. We analyze it using the artificial intelligence algorithm to optimize the building's energy use in real time. Okay, and then these artificial intelligence are. I mean, these algorithms are considered artificial intelligence because they change based on the data they receive. So on a real time basis, historical data and as and when the data and the pattern behavior changes, the model will learn on its own. So that's the machine learning part of it. Okay. And that's how the, the intelligence is built in. The, it allows the software to make predictions for the building's energy usage 24 hours in advance based on the experience in the past. Day. So this uh, system will predict the energy usage in advance. And we will say each, each process or each uh, machinery or uh, different uh, usage pattern, we can predict it. So. Once this artificial intelligence software is connected to the electric meter and uh, wider electricity network, it can automatically switch on and switch off the different equipments based on the system. So that's how you build in the build the art in intelligence into a machine. So if you have a huge pump running, you have a escalator running in a commercial complex, you build this, uh, integrate this solution to that uh, um, pump or to that escalator and it can automatically switch on and switch off based on the recommendation from the solution. So that's how it builds the energy, I mean the intelligence into the system. So you can, kind of, same way you can integrate this uh, artificial intelligence solutions with all your electrical equipments, heavy loading equipments, whether it's a uh, uh, sewage plant or whether it's, a, so which, which are things which we don't need to run it all the time. You can plan the um, uh, processing of certain kind of machinery when uh, uh, based on your uh, plan and the energy plan so you can uh, integrate this AI software with uh, those machineries and you can automate that and so there will be an uh, intelligence enabled and by controlling when the building uses more or less energy the software converts the building's energy load uh, load profile for being more or less fixed load into a flexible load so this flexible load concept is something which is uh, which is there in many countries so you don't need to say if you have a, a commercial building you don't need to say that okay i am going to my load uh, electricity need this uh, this much megawatts so you don't need to be charged for that fixed load 
so instead of that you can have a flexible load and your tariff for your uh, rate plan will be based on the flexible load and it, so with that with the artificial intelligence solution you can optimize that flexible load you can you don't need to cross that um, high maximum load uh, and uh, you can monitor your energy consumption and then say that some of the optional businesses or some of the optional machinery which you don't need to run all the time you can plan when the your sewage plan plan will run when your uh, particular water pump will run you don't need to run that all the 24 hours so when there is load load in the other uh, usage you can run this machinery so that's how you optimize your energy usage and uh, run your flexible uh, manage your flexible load and then the tech, uh, the flexible load is a valuable community to the market so in, in many countries where you can sell back your extra energy to the main grid you can make money there so by ap applying this kind of artificial intelligence solution you optimize your energy usage and then the surplus energy you can sell it back to the grid okay so this concept may not be applicable for us in kerala but uh, this is something which will come in near future and selling the buildings flexible load to the market so many many countries uh, you know the, the commercial building owners they make money like that so you reduce the cost by optimizing your energy usage and you cut, cut the carbon footprint and then maximize the comfort level through short uh, load shifting and optimization and then on top of that you sell the sell out the ex, uh, excess uh, energy uh, surplus energy to the main grid and you can make money whether it's uh, uh, solar energy or a, uh, hydro energy i mean the uh, hydroelectric energy which is supplied by the from the main grid the next is the artificial intelligence in the industrial sector so this is a huge area right so this is where the maximum energy is consumed so compared to thousands of uh, residential houses one particular industry will consume energy right whether it's a manufacturing unit or um, um, any of that so 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 due to lack of time i'm not, I, I don't, i'm not going into the details of um, this but we need to understand that uh, so how do we apply this artificial intelligence uh, in the so to optimize the art, uh, energy usage in the industrial sector so artificial intelligence can be used in the industrial sector to reduce the energy cost through optimization so you can monitor and control the energy consumption whether it's a shop floor big shop floor you have power process you have uh, um, uh, automated uh, cranes and then you have uh, different machineries uh, molding machines or different conveyor belts are there material handling equipment are there all this you can monitor the energy consumption in a typical manufacturing unit whether it's aluminium or whether it's a steel or a cement or uh, um, pharmaceutical companies or chemical companies or plastic manufacturing unit uh, dairy uh, or any of these industries so it's all about uh, collecting the data and then using that data to predict the usage monitor your equipment and cut, cut down on the wastage and plan the energy consumption right so so that, that's the whole philosophy so whether it's a cement industry or pharmaceutical industry the technology the usage there are many things which are common from a uh, ai point of view okay so some of the examples so i can take hundreds of examples from each of these industry but uh, due to lack of time we will have uh, very few um, some of these uh, um, solutions which we we have built so when i was in ibm these are some of the solutions which uh, we have built uh, for the steel manufacture so there is one is uh, uh, energy consumption in the steel manufacturing industry if you are familiar with the steel manufacturing the guys like star steel or core steel tata steel um, um, all those people so so the, the process is that you have the the iron ore coming from the brazil or different countries so iron ore is converted into pure iron hot briquette iron it's called hbq hbi hot briquette iron so that is about 98 percent pure iron so it is done through different process so you have blast furnace basic oxygen furnace uh, different uh, uh, furnaces are there so we have this build this uh, solution in uh, uh, around seven eight years back in ibm when I, uh, we were building this so we have built this uh, energy optimization solution for steel manufacturing so what it does is in a blast furnace high volume of uh, high amount of uh, energy electricity is used for to uh, to at for a 
for for a certain duration of time to uh, in the in the steel um, blast furnace so then if you have uh, say 10 furnaces you need to plan your uh, uh, you, you will not run all the furnaces at the same time so it is like a cycle so you have uh, 10 furnaces and so you have uh, two furnaces will run together and the next two will take over after that then the next two so like that so what we have done is uh, we have built a solution to see the predict the energy of usage for each furnace based on the uh, steel order uh, the requirement the output take that data backwards and then predict how much energy is needed for what duration whether it's for 45 minutes this many megawatts of energy is needed for furnace number one and then the furnace number two will need from this time to this time to produce this this tonnage of um, for bricket time right so we built all this uh, solution and then there is an interesting story interesting story about uh, this so when i uh, present we built this solution and we, when i presented this in one of the steel manufacturers conference uh, in delhi um so so there were uh, people uh, you know the, the chief executive officer cxos from uh, gindal um, the tata steel sr steel most of the steel manufacturing companies were there so they were all uh, listening about this solution and then they said no this solution is really good but uh, we may be able to use it maybe only after 15 years so that, that's a typical scenario with uh, most of the manufacturing industry. So the problem is that you have a, to, be, to run this artificially intelligent solution, you need the basic infrastructure to collect the data. So a steel manufacturing, a blast furnace will run without a computer. You don't need a computer to run a blast furnace. You don't need to collect any data from a blast furnace to uh, produce for what bucket time, right? Or you don't need any computer to run a refinery or in a reactor. Um, in a reactor refinery, in a, in a, a refri reactor in a refinery will run without any computer 24 bar service. So that's the problem. Need, the moment you take um, artificial intelligence or computer or technology to the industry, this is where the basic problem is. So you need to have the all the basic infrastructure to collect the data from a. So if you are building a data science uh, artificial intelligence solutions for blast furnace, you need to have sensors fitted at every every portion of the uh, the process. And inside the uh, and and the uh, blast furnace and uh, uh, every uh, and at the and at the conveyor or at the steel uh, feeding the iron ore feed uh, mechanism or at the output or every places you need to have the capture the data digital data and once you build, get that all that data into the big data platform only then you can build the artificial intelligence solution. So even in the energy energy sector, this is the this is the challenge for us to adopt it. So you need to have a mechanism where, to, where you can collect the data, whether it's from a generator or from a pump or from a, uh, any of the machineries in the energy transmission or energy generation or energy consumption. So collecting the data is a challenge. So once we have that data, collected the data from the right data, critical data, and bring it to a big data platform, and then you can build the artificial intelligence solutions to, to run all these use cases which we discussed. Till now. So then another use case in the uh, industrial sector is the predictive maintenance. So that you have the critical machinery. You go to a refinery, you have a reactor, you have heat exchangers, you have um, big uh, pumps are there, the, the process pumps are there which are running on 24 uh, last 7. All those critical equipment in a, in a process industry, um, in an oil and gas industry or in a, a chemical industry uh, or in a manufacturing industry, you can have predictive maintenance solutions built, artificial intelligence solutions built for those solutions to optimize the energy usage to predict the maintenance to predict the breakdown all that but for all that you need the basic it infrastructure in place so to, to collect the data you need to have the iot iot devices to you need to have the sensors to collect the data store the data into a big data platform and then on top of that you build the a solutions right and then the operation optimization solution so you have a shop floor so something like a maridi assembly unit or, a, or any um, consumer goods assembly line, right? So you have hundreds of uh, machineries, the power process or the um, um, molding machines, the injection molding machines, different machineries are there. So you can optimize all your uh, operations using artificial intelligence and whereby you can reduce the energy consumption, you can improve the uh, operational efficiency, you can improve the um, energy, um, uh, reduce the energy usage and improve the uh, profit margin, reduce the cost. Right, so these are all different uh, uh, usage in the industrial sector. So since we are running out of time, I will quickly run through 
to the next one. So next is on the artificial intelligence uh, for municipalities. So when we say municipality, it can be cities or it can be towns or you know all these are applicable. So when we say municipality, it's just the size of the uh, cluster which matters, right? So whether it's a small town or bigger town or a city, um, the usage is the use cases from a, a technology point of view. Many of them are similar. Only the scale and the size will matter. So artificial intelligence uh, assist in municipalities for and the public sector to solve an array of challenges, helping them to convert into smart cities. So the moment we build all these artificial intelligence solutions for the towns and cities, that's how you convert them into smart cities. So smart city is nothing but you build this kind of solutions for your street lighting, your traffic lighting, your heating, cooling, office building, your commercial building, uh, airport, schools, churches, homes, hospital, factory, anything, any any of the users, any of the buildings for the consumers in a city or in a town, you can have a AI solution to build for them. The only challenge for us is to how are you going to collect the data? So that's the challenge. So so you need to go digital first. So you need to have enabled computer enabled sensor enabled. So you have a top, uh, street lights. So if you have hundred roads in Toronto. City, how will you optimize to build an artificial intelligence solution for street light uh, uh, in, in the Trivandrum city? So you need to have sensors uh, built on each of this uh, street light and then which is con connected to a main server, computer server, then you collect the data and then you will say, you can say that uh, and you can um, connect it to different kind of uh, process uh, control units whereby you can automatically switch on and switch off based on the need. And the, the light density, how much light is needed in, on each road, you can plan all that. So just an, as an example. So for example, another school or a hospital, right? So all those uh, areas, wherever the energy, from an energy point of view, we need to have um, the, the mechanism where we can collect the data. So we need to go digital first before we apply the artificial intelligence. So in a hospital, you will have many equipment, many machineries which are running on electricity. AC units will be there, operation theaters are there, um, hospital equipments are there. All those things need to be connected and not need to have data points where we can collect the data and then build artificial intelligence solutions so that we can uh, provide real-time energy consumption in information and we can have um, real-time energy planning. We can have real-time energy for forecasting, right? So there's a long, long way to go, right? So when we talk about whether it's in India or in any country, uh, that, that's why you don't, you don't, you are not seeing the artificial intelligence uh, widely used in in all these uh, sectors. For example, municipalities or cities or town or corporation, um, it's not easy to you know, build end-to-end uh, AI solution. So probably you can have uh, traffic AI solution for uh, buildings, commercial buildings. So, so gradually we need to go one by one, right? So if, uh, otherwise, um, otherwise if you if you look at the other industries like insurance or uh, uh, retail uh, online retailer or a bank, in, say you take an example of bank. So I, I work in a, uh, I work for a bank. My customer is a you know multinational bank where uh, they have the data. That available. So we build the uh, end-to-end AI solution, which is completely transforming the bank. Because the the, the advantage here is that 100% of the data of the bank is digital. It's in the computer. We already have the data available, um, and then we can build a solution. But in terms of a, a, a factory or a, a school or a, or a hospital uh, or a commercial building, you may have partial data available, but the other data is not. You don't have the data available. Uh, so that you can build an artificial intelligence solution. So that's the challenge. So there is a whole long way to 
uh, reach whatever we are talking about but um, the the use cases which i am talking about is these are all potential things which we can think of in futuristic uh, use cases futuristic uh, solutions which we may be able to adopt one by one gradually okay so we need to build a roadmap of uh, adoption on on all this but it's very important that we understand how we can use it and what are the advantages and the, the, the benefits of uh, adopting a solutions for energy management so that that's the key then there is a smart energy metering so since we are running out of time i will quickly run through that so we can have energy meters um, you know smart energy meters so um, especially in the commercial buildings and factories you can have uh, um, iot enabled uh, smart um, machineries and uh, energy meters smart metering right so whereby we can plan the our energy usage and forecast the energy requirement then cognitive power plant so again so we were talking about the energy transmission and energy consumption so what about the energy generation so we can have artificial intelligence enabled power plant so we get all this data from the users and then the, we will know that um, so the the power plants can forecast how much is the energy needed for the next one one day next one week or for the next one month how much is the power needed in which area so based on that we can plan the so the it can be automatic automated and the power plants can be cognified so we can have cognitive power plants whereby taking all this uh, energy forecasting data from the consumers we can plan the grid manage the grid and then monitor the uh, uh, and manage the energy production so you can we can plan how many generators need to be running at this point this many days based on the, the energy load is uh, forecast is more you can run more power more generators and if the when the usage is going to come down you can shut down some of those generators so you can plan the generation energy generation based on the data from the forecast uh, requirement energy requirement data forecast future data coming from the consumers but again this there is a long way to reach this place because for this we need energy data coming from all the consumers right so we need to data come from all the consumers from the whether it's residential or commercial or industry uh, or public area all all those things so there is a whole, whole long I mean, long way to reach this place but uh, we need to just i'm just uh, telling this uh, use case which uh, now future where this is where the future is going to be right so that that's another one so that's all the from my side so we have 15 minutes uh, for the question and answer so we have a lot of questions in the chat box Okay. So shall we read it now? So if yeah, if you can read out um, some because I was not monitoring the chat box. I mean chat chat box. Okay. So okay. If you can read out the important questions, so we can go through that. And okay. uh, if you don't get time to finish, so we have another uh, uh, twelve minutes, so we can address so some of the questions. And remaining questions we can send out uh, through email or something. Right. Okay. 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 So. So the first question from Sudhak Mari. Hello, sir. Yeah, not able to hear. Can you repeat? Uh, first question from Sudhak Mari. Okay, okay, yeah, please. How electrical theft can be predicted by AI? How oh, electrical? Theft. Theft. Okay. Okay. So the electrical theft is uh, so again. This is uh, you know, again a question of uh, collecting the data. So. Um, so we need to have the the user behavior and then the how the test is uh, done say for example uh, you know uh, so we need to get all those data into a system uh, say for example someone is uh, tapping the data or some someone is forging with the meter uh, all those uh, historically we need to collect the historical data of that so you have the last 10 years of data and then we can using the machine learning models we can predict some pattern so we will know that okay this particular consumer there is a sudden uh, increase in or sudden decrease in his energy bill say so, so last uh, uh, so there is a commercial building and then last uh, uh, one year he was paying say 2 lakh rupees per month as energy bill and then suddenly his bill has reduced to 20000 right so that, that's one way we, we can identify and then the energy meters so, so where, where where is the forging done 
so we need to have uh, you know sensor enabled uh, um, machineries or the equipments where the data can be collected and then the pattern of how the um, the previous uh, you know theft is happening so what are the different ways people are doing the theft so take all the data and then extrapolate that and futuristically we can predict that so again so so these are the kind of things which we do in a bank also for theft but the problem with the theft is that uh, you cannot 100 percent predict because the the thieves are innovative the way we are innovative thieves are also innovative and say for example the antivirus right so we will be uh, put an antivirus in a software in a computer uh, but it's not 100 percent perfect right so because the, the people who are building a virus they are also innovative so the only thing we can do is take the test data from the historical last 10 years of data how the thieves are doing how we can identify that put that all that into a computer and build a machine learning models and predict the patterns how a thief is operating and then we will be able to predict that okay with this this pattern this is likelihood of theft it cannot be 100 percent but we can predict to extent of 80 percent or 95 percent 90 percent and then as and when the new innovation data comes in the computer itself uh, machine learning model will uh, come up with new patterns and potential that uh, area okay so what is uh, but the bottom line is that you cannot 100% predict, but you can say probably 85%, 90% you can predict, provided you have a 10 years of data. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So there is another question from Mr. Ananda Patmanavan GS. Yes. Okay. So uh, in the presentation you have mentioned about Vortex hydraulic project. Uh, yeah. And it was mentioned that uh, you predict maintenance requirements, yeah. forcing breakdowns, and do the needful, especially in the case of pumps. The question is, can you please explain all sensors or meter data you collect and at what sampling rate to feed such ML models? Yeah, so so see, this is this need a lot of domain expertise. So, so we cannot uh, take one predictive. The predictive asset maintenance is a, it's a concept, right? So people are doing in oil and gas, they are doing building for reactors. There are people who are building for pumps. So there are people who are doing for generators. So, but the data is different. So, if you are building for this particular uh, vortex uh, generator, we need to we need a domain expertise from a maintenance engineer and historically in a generator, what which are the critical components, right? And then which are the what are the reasons which are leading to uh, failure? It can be the water head, or it can be the temperature, it can be the RPM, it can be the wear and tear, it can be the friction, it can be the lubricant oil. So, all this data we need to real time we can data stream it. So, so we need to have sensors and enable there, and with that sensors, stream the data into a big data platform, and then build a model, and build the model and see how it is predicting. And over a period of time, so we are not going to reach 100% prediction accuracy on day one, right? So you, with all this data, and then again historically, so if you have a similar uh, uh, generator, you have similar another hundred generators which are running in another other places. Collect all those data which are the components which you are running. Say for example, a, a piston, how many years it was running? Or a crankshaft, how many years it was running? Or, and what are the reasons when it failed? And which, um, uh, you know, what is the chemistry, metallurgy of the, each of the, you know, which material it is made of? Which grade of steel? All these things, we need to take that, and then come up with a machine learning model. And again, over a period of time, uh, you need to improve that. So, when first you build a model, you may reach a 60% of prediction accuracy. 40% you may go wrong. Then the next set of data, another six months of data, you collect it and see which are the features, which are the critical features which is leading to failure. Collect all that data and again improve the prediction accuracy. So collecting data is the challenge on all this, and we need to go on a on a on a case to case basis and then take the historical maintenance data, and then you will have uh, you know, each component. You will know that this particular component was. Uh, life is there for three years or four years and this was failed because of this you will have all this data available historically so we need to get all that data and put it into a computer and we need to build all uh, collect all these uh, hundreds of data points and then build the machine learning model so there is a whole lot of data preparation and data collection which is going to be a challenge once we have the data in place building a machine learning model is pr pr pretty easy okay so okay. thank you thank you so there is another question from Mr. Uh, Anish R. The question is, can a algorithm program to PLC? And also, what is its scope for power system protection and relay? 
Yeah, so see, there are many algorithms in machine learning or deep learning, neural networks. There are many, many are there. And again, how will you select which algorithm to use? It all depends on what are the what is the business problem you are trying to solve and what you want to achieve and what are the data available with all that. So, so it's a, something which uh, in, in a, as a data scientist, we will the selection of the any algorithm is a part of that. Okay, so we cannot just say that okay, this particular algorithm, you know, whether it's a k-means or whether it's a linear regression or a random forest, this will solve this problem. We cannot say from outside. So for that, we need to understand what is the business problem. What are you trying to predict? Is it are you going to predict a uh, breakdown or are you going to predict a uh, energy consumption? Are you going to predict the energy forecasting or are you going to predict the theft? So based on the business problem, and then what are the data available? How much data is available? We are not going to have 100% data. How much data is available and how much is the data is clean? How much data is not reliable? So, so there are a whole lot of uh, uh, parameters um, uh, which, you, which will define, which will decide which uh, algorithm to use. Okay. okay. Uh, and another question from Vengadesh is, uh, what is the correlation between fuzzy logic and AI? Yeah, so that's again, it's a, it's a one of the, you know, uh, basically we do, do use that for unstructured data, NLP. NLP we use uh, fuzzy logic uh, extensively, right? So these are all one of, uh, there are many such techniques available in the AI. Okay, sir, okay. I think the doubt is clear for Vengadesh. So there is one more question from Anish. What are the advantages and disadvantages on switching from microprocessor-based relays to AI-based relays for power system protection? Is yeah, there so, any Yeah, see, AI, AI, AI will not uh, replace any of your uh, um, power, uh, control systems which are already running. AI can only support, because this is, this is only a data, right? So these are only, uh, you, it is not going to replace uh, control unit or control power, power relay in your system. So you can augment it. So you can add the uh, intelligence to your existing system, uh, which will um, say, okay, when to use it, how much to run it, or when to shut down, when to start, how much, how, at, uh, at what rate it run, all, all that. So you are only adding intelligence to your existing infrastructure. So A, A is not going to replace any of your uh, infrastructure. It can, it can probably, of course, you can optimize that, but uh, you can make it A enabled. Your uh, Generator can be AI enabled. Your control system unit can relay can be microprocessor can be AI enabled, but it's not going to replace 100%. Okay. So, okay. so there is uh, another question from my participant is what is the time period to collect uh, data of any small glass making industry to install AI solution? Yeah, typically you see in, in bank we do typically one year data with one year data. Uh, same, again, the uh, data size is also important, right? So uh, one year data with a million records is good enough to start a model. But again, um, the more the merrier, right? So the more you have data, you, you have better accuracy, prediction accuracy. But somewhere you need to start. So if you have six months data, you can start, but your prediction accuracy will be less. If you have one year data, good enough to start. Okay. So okay. But again, one year data is, is safe. The, again, the data size also matters. If your one year data is going to say, if it is one year data for prediction, um, predictive maintenance, if it is going to have only 100 records or 1,000 records, then uh, you are you are not going to get any prediction accuracy. Right? Okay. So when I say one year data, I, I am assuming that it will generate at least half million records. Okay, okay. So the another question is, uh, how can we make use of A for EV charging topology for car parks? Such as vehicles to vehicle, vehicle to grid, grid to vehicle, vehicle to home, based on the state of charge of EV battery, acting as self decision maker and optimize energy. Yeah, see, as I said in the first, I think the in the second slide, um, AI can be used in any any business case or any industry, provided you you have data available. So it's all about. Uh, whether it's a charging unit from uh, grid to car or car to battery, anywhere, can you collect data? That's the first question. If you can collect data, and then do you have a business, genuine business problem you are trying to solve using data? If both are there, if you have data, well, if you can collect data either through a sensor or through a meter or through manual entry or through any of the way about this business problem which you're trying to solve, if you can collect the data and bring it into a data 
based big data platform and then you are trying to what are you trying to predict is there something tangible you are going to forecast or predict if you have this kind of scenario you can apply AI in any business solution any business problem whether it's in energy or battery or anything okay okay so another question from uh, dr vanoj verma okay can you please suggest a approach for wind speed and wind power prediction yeah so wind, wind speed also again the windmill is there you have um, no you can use uh, so how the uh, windmill uh, prediction in the maintenance the predictive maintenance and then the wind, windmill energy uh, generation so if you get the consumption data and how can you you can Uh, take it back and then you can say uh, the energy generation come you can forecast and you can predict the generation so there are m- many things so here also again you need the domain expertise right so you should understand what is the business is there a business problem this a is only a technology right so if you need a business domain expert uh, expert to say that okay there are certain business problem i have and i can can i collect data related to that problem Okay. Right? So first is you should have a business problem. I described the business problem. Second is collect the data, digital data related to that problem, and then you can using that you can then you can apply the AI and you can solve solve that problem. So you need a strong uh, domain expertise to understand the business problem and scope out the solution there and collect the data. and then build a business machine learning model or a deep learning model and then you predict whether it's for generation or it can be for maintenance it can be for consumption anything any area we have lots of questions that has come up through chat box so as the time has come up i will ask one last question is that from vinod kumar rr sir this no. is a based energy management is economic when compared to other management systems yeah see again uh, any management uh, system if you talk about any business management how do you manage you you are take you are managing your system based on your historical information and historical knowledge right if you are an electrical engineer you study a btech four years and two years of mtech and uh, another four years in research so what you are doing is only you are uh, going through the data historically collected by many engineers in the industry right so what we are in ai what we are doing is we are taking that historical data and looking at the patterns and looking at the internal relationship correlations and then forecasting it and futuristically predicting okay so any business any decision manager so that's why ai we can use it for decision management So a CEO of an energy company or any company, how he is uh, deciding his future strategy? He is looking at his dashboard and uh, Excel sheet, and he will say, "Okay, I had production this much, and uh, this is how my business was running for the last year." And then he will study, look at his competition in the market, and then he will take a decision, random decision. It can be right, it can be wrong. So what we are doing is we take all that data and using a computer. to accurately predict the future we accurately we are instead of a machine a ceo sitting in a cabin and or a few people sitting in a conference uh, board room and taking a decision instead of that you are taking the computer to analyze the millions of data historical data and come up with accurate decision for your future management for your strategy your management decisions okay so the question is uh, if we is it better which is better management decision or uh, artificial intelligence decision that's better so if you have more and more data humans have a limitation of processing that data and taking decision out of it if you have millions and billions of data lying about your business uh, no ceo no board board can uh, you know, analyze that prop data properly and come into a pro- proper decision but the computers can so that's where you do you apply artificial intelligence to uh, come up with the proper right decision right so so that that's where, that answers the any any business any industry okay okay uh, So uh, is, uh, we are coming to the end of the session. There are lots of questions uh, that will be answered. We will send you the um, uh, answers of these questions while we meet. So I uh, hand over the phone to Mr. Rajiv. Uh, he is an engineer and the technologist to propose vote of thanks. Hi all, I'm Rajiv from EMC. Uh, first of all, I would like to. Express my sincere thanks to Mr. Mathi Joseph sir for con- 
for being as a speaker in this webinar and also express my sincere thanks for the beautiful session and also for the participants you have made the session very pretty much informative by asking lots of questions also and uh, some of the questions you have left unanswered and we are collecting that question sign that we will send to Matthew Joseph sir and he will answer it and we will send you a mail. No worries. Uh, and also, uh, 